I was wrong about freeze frames in DaVinci Resolve, and I couldn't be happier. The mistake I made was freeze frames and DaVinci Resolve always kind of frustrated me because in Final Cut Pro, they have something called hold frames. So if you have a clip and you want it to just freeze a frame, you just go to the frame that you want to freeze and you press shift H and it creates a hold frame. And then you can extend that out or make it as short as you want. And if you double click it, you can actually add a speed transition so it smooths out coming out of it. So I really like that in Final Cut Pro and I just got used to it where in DaVinci Resolve, the way I was working was I would go to the clip that I wanted, go to speed change, just click the snowflake right there and that creates a freeze frame. And then I would go out, create a cut, click on the clip I wanted and then just press the direction forward button. And then that would, it would separate the clip into three parts. And that's the way I used to work. And it's just because I didn't know, but I'm gonna show you how the proper way to do it is. You find the frame that you want, open up your speed editor, which is command R on the Mac. And this is where you can do speed ramps and all that kind of fun stuff. The thing that I never clicked on before, because I would always right click on the clip and there was no option like in Final Cut Pro to create a freeze frame. But the thing that I was missing was this little drop down. If you click on that, there it is, freeze frame. You click freeze frame and what happens? The same thing that happens in Final Cut Pro where it creates a frozen moment in that clip without separating it into multiple clips. You can just drag it out, but one of the things that happens, DaVinci Resolve is, is that it's eating into the next clip. So I'm just gonna undo all that. So I don't want this clip to get shorter. I want everything else to move down. And the trick is go to the frame that you want, click on the trim edit mode or press T on your keyboard and go down to this little drop down menu icon, click on it and then press freeze frame. And then that shifts the rest of the footage that is down the timeline over. And so if you extend this out, everything moves over. So now this is kind of working like a magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro, which is fantastic. And you can make it as quick or short as you want. And it just creates your freeze frame and then it continues. But moving beyond that, if you open up the retime curve, now you have these little curves. And one of the things you can do, because this is the retime curve and this is the frame selector. So if it gets a little bit confusing, you can actually just go down and turn off retime frame because you've already chosen the frames that you want. But what we want to work with here is these two handles. And right now it's just a solid stop and then a start. So what you can do is just select one and then instead of making it linear, you can make it a Bezier curve. And then now, if you do the other one as well, and now it'll smooth in and smooth out. But if you notice, it does feel a little bit janky if you push it a little bit too far. So what you can do is just go to your, uh, open up the, make sure the inspector is open by clicking up here and go to retime and scaling and retime processing. Because by default, it is set to the nearest, but we want to change it to optical flow. This is very similar to what it's like in Final Cut Pro for me. So I love that. So just keep in mind that when you do optical flow, it, depending on your system, it may slow it down, but you notice that it just feels so much nicer because it's creating those frames for you. So not only can you do speed ramps, but also these hold frames in DaVinci Resolve. So now you can add an effect that's over top of everything and it keeps it one clip, which I think is fantastic. So, and shout out to editor Afsal for pointing this out to me that Final Cut Pro like hold frame feature is also available in DaVinci Resolve, which then sent me down this track to figure it out. And now I'm making amends by making this video. Thank you Afsal for pointing that out and making me love DaVinci Resolve even more than I already do. If you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Also check out this video where I talk about the features that I would love DaVinci Resolve to just take from Final Cut Pro. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.